Okay, so I think it is time. So is it okay if we mm. start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, so we start the morning session of the third day of the conference in honor of Takeshi Saito. And I'm Kinichi Bonai and I'll be the chair for this morning. Some practical information about Zoom. So we ask that you and ask your questions at the end of the talk, and you can ask via chat, or you can raise your hand using the reaction at the bottom of the screen. Or during the, course, during the talk, if you have some questions that you really want to ask, then also please use chat or raise your hand to ask questions. And But depending on how things go, we're sorry if we cannot really answer those interactively immediately. So those are the practical informations. And also, I should mention that there is a social event today at 7.30 p.m. Japan time using a system called Yather Town. And so this is really for celebration for Takeshi's birthday. So please attend if you like to. OK, so I think we're all set. So the first speaker this morning is Wei Chiu Zhang. And his title is on the board, so please. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for the invitation. It is a great honor for me to speak uh, in honor of Takeshi Saito. Uh, I first met Takeshi 16 years ago. Um, he was a committee member of um, uh, the defense of my master member. And a couple of years later, uh, he was again the reader of my uh, PhD thesis. So uh, at that time, he was like, uh, Authoritative figure that up to, uh, and but later I got uh, more chance to uh, talk to him and discuss with him, and I learned uh, tremendously from uh, discussions, contacts with him, and also through his work, and, uh, this uh, vibrant school around him. So thank you very much, Takeshi, and I wish you a happy birthday. Um, thank you. So today. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, ultra product cohomology and applications. So let me start with uh, applications. Um, first, I'd like to review some uh, background. This is really for, uh, for students. So um, I'd like to review the classical uh, wave cohomology series. So we work over uh, base field a small k. And uh, we um, look for cohomology series with coefficients in a field capital K of characteristic zero. And uh, if a small k, the Wave cohomology theory um, is a functor from smooth projective varieties over k. Um, now this is actually a contravariant functor to the category of uh, graded uh, algebras over uh, capital K, uh, satisfying a number of axioms such as the finite formula, proper duality, and, and cycle path map. Um, now, uh, the classical uh, wave cohomology theories are the following. In the case where uh, small k has characteristic zero, now we, we always have um, Durand cohomology, or uh, the, the algebraic Durand cohomology, this is the uh, hyper cohomology of uh, the, the Durand complex. And um, if K is embedded in C, then we have Betty cohomology, D of X. Um, this is the um, uh, singular cohomology of. Um, the uh, C points of X, this coefficient in Q. So for Durand cohomology, capital K is uh, small k, and for uh, Betty cohomology, capital K is uh, Q. And the two uh, Betty cohomology series, and then the comparison isomorphism um, due to Grothendieck. Durand cohomology uh, 
um, this is um, when the tensor over C, we have an isomorphism between those two. Dx. Um, now, in the case of uh, the focus today is going to be the case of uh, a characteristic P greater than zero. Then uh, some classical examples of Ser show that there is no uh, wave on modulus coefficient in Q, so we cannot take a Q. Uh, on the positive side, uh, the, the classical wave homology series are the, the crystalline uh, homology, mm. where K is the fraction field of um, the bit thing of uh, K, if K is say, perfect. But uh, really, the focus of this talk is going to be the uh, other uh, wave homology series. In, Positive characteristic, namely the uh, analytic a tau homology. Okay, it's QL, uh, L prime different from G. But this is actually a, a family, it's an infinite family of wave homology series. So we have H star, uh, XK bar, uh, QL for each L different from P. And uh, there's no uh, direct comparison uh, between those uh, groups. Um, however, um, we do know something about their, uh, their relations. So um, here, here are some things that, that we know. So uh, the first um, theorem of the lean on the way conjectures um, implies that all these spaces, so this is a QL vector space, uh, they have the same dimension. So this is independent of L. Um, now we can, uh, okay, so uh, there's a related uh, result of Gubber. So the theorem of uh, Gubber uh, says that uh, furthermore, there's an integral structure, the integral um, analytic homology, this coefficient in ZL is uh, torsion free for uh, L large enough. Now we can, uh, so let me call this, let me call this A and let me call this B. So we can reformulate A. We can restate A as independence of the Betty numbers, as saying that there exists uh, a Q vector space uh, as a V such that uh, the HI uh, X K bar QL. Uh, is isomorphic to B with scalars extended to QL. Of course, this isomorphism is, is, is not canonical. And uh, if you combine uh, this uh, A and uh, double theorem on the torsion freeness for L large enough, then uh, this is equivalent to saying that there exists uh, a finite, uh, finitely generated Z module M, uh, such that the homology of its coefficients in uh, ZL is isomorphic to M and there is ZL. So again, this is uh, non canonical. So if you just look at this uh, cohomology as ZL module, then it uh, looks as if it comes from uh, some uh, Z module. And of course, this, because this is not canonical, it will not uh, preserve, um, let's say, uh, actions of 
uh, the endomorphisms on the cohomology, etc. So we can formally uh, restate it as, as follows, as, uh, as this. And moreover, there's a, there's a refinement so on the, um, uh, on this point A, there's a re refinement of A. So not only do you have independence of uh, betting numbers, but uh, if K is a finite field, of course the uh, uh, Vay conjecture that tells us more. So the Vay conjecture is, um, uh, or the Villain theorem actually says that um, the, um, the Frobenius eigenvalue on um, HI of XK bar uh, QL, uh, they are uh, the way numbers of uh, QA numbers of weight uh, I, which um, So which implies uh, something slightly stronger than A that uh, I call this capital A, that uh, actually, if you look at the uh, characteristic, the reciprocal characteristic polynomial of uh, Frobenius acting on HI, uh, uh, QL, uh, this is a polynomial with uh, coefficient in C and is independent of L. Um, of course, uh, this uh, small a is, is just a special case of capital A. And the proof of B, the proof of Gabber theorem also um, uses, the, the original proof of Gabber also uses the, the Vay conjectures. Actually, it uses a, a step in the proof of Vay conjectures in the, the, uh, the GCD theorem, the greatest common divider theorem. That was kind of uh, subtle. But um, it is possible to give a proof of, uh, of B uh, independent, independently from the uh, GCD theorem. It is actually possible to give a proof based on ultra product homology. Um, so, okay, so all these uh, have been known uh, for a long time. So now let me venture into uh, the realm of unknowns. Um, so let me recall the uh, homological um, standard conjecture. Um, of Grothendieck, it asserts that the uh, Randy Bay homology theory, the corresponding homological equivalence, uh, is the same as the numerical equivalence. And in particular, We'll have, so this implies that uh, for each L, this um, homological, uh, this analytic homological equivalence will be the same as the uh, L prime analytic homo uh, homological equivalence, which L, 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 L prime. So this L analytic homological equivalence is independent of L. Now, uh, this is related to um, this uh, independence of batting numbers A here uh, in the following way. So there's a result of um, involving uh, the green. Um, so at least in the case where K is uh, the closure of FP, um, and he showed that the independence, so this is independent of L, uh, if and only if, um, is in fact a supported cohomology. Uh, with QL coefficient, uh, have Betty numbers independent of L. And this for, so uh, previously I've taken X to be projective smooth, but here we uh, take all, uh, let's say, separated and finite type 
uh, acts are okay. So uh, this is uh, this is an extension of the property small a of this independence of L uh, that is a consequence of the uh, the, the uh, way numbers in the case of uh, projective things right uh, way projections in the case of projective things right. Um, okay, now this question is uh, natural to ask uh, some extended uh, versions of this. Uh, expected uh, independence. Uh, so th this is, if you call this small a, then we can ask the question capital A. So in case your k is a finite field, uh, do we have that uh, the characteristic polynomial is with this uh, coefficient in Z and independent of L? And this is also an old question. It's a special case of, uh, uh, of uh, questions raised by uh, Sarah and Tate. But also, we can ask uh, this question B do we have um, freeness for a large enough? Sorry, this is the L. So this actually, um, if you combine small a and b, again, you can, can state this uh, in the form of uh, the existence of a, of a z module such that each of this uh, zl cohomology modules is uh, deduced from this uh, z module from uh, extension of scalars. Well, uh, then we state uh, <coughs> summarize hmm. uh, what we know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, if, um, Okay, maybe before that, uh, we can ask the similar questions, the same questions, uh, not just for uh, compactly supported cohomology, but also for Euro cohomology and for, let's say, intersection cohomology. Mm -hmm. uh, um, now, what we know is that if X is proper, uh, then actually A and B, uh, they hold for uh, the intersection cohomology of X. Mm -hmm. So maybe, uh, we add equidimensional uh, for the sake of the definition of intersection cohomology. And uh, for, for Euro cohomology, uh, we uh, don't know much, but we know a very special case uh, where X is smooth and C is a curve. And uh, there's a morphism from X to C that is proper. This, uh, this morphism is proper. Now, in this case, we know that A and B uh, hold for uh, the Euro cohomology of X and uh, compactly supported cohomology of X, but also for uh, the cohomology of, uh, of fibers of, uh, of, this, uh, of X. So uh, if we take a as you take a, take a point, so Y is a close point of C, and then we take the uh, geometric fiber and we can ask the same questions uh, for this uh, fiber. So those are the, uh, the results that you know. So this is a theorem of 
um, uh, this part 1a, this um, uh, L independence part is uh, due to cover. Um, and the, the rest is in uh, joint work with uh, Anna. Um, and uh, we uh, proved this part B using uh, ultra product normal. So any, uh, any questions so far? So you, what, what did you say are you using what? Using ultra product cohomology that I'm going to oh. explain now in the rest of the talk. Hmm. Okay, let me move on to the uh, definition of ultra product cohomology. Hmm. The idea is really uh, simple. So we wanted a, a way homology theory uh, with coefficients and characters of zero. Now the usual way of defining it uh, using a tau homology is to take, uh, first we take uh, Z over Ln, we take this torsion coefficient, and then we take the limit. And this gives us uh, ZL. And then uh, we take the fraction field of ZL, and that gives us uh, QL. But there's uh, another way of getting from characteristic from a uh, torsion to characteristic zero uh, without passing through uh, such rings of uh, dimension greater than zero. Maybe we can simply take the product of all the FLs. Uh, by all, I mean all the uh, peaks. So I take uh, script L to be the set of prime numbers. Now, this is a ring of uh, cruel dimension zero. So let me recall uh, maybe the. Uh, this is just standard algebra. Uh, the, the spectrum of this ring has uh, one to one correspondence with uh, the set of uh, ultra, ultra filters uh, on L. Um, that should also remind you what, a, what an ultra filter is. So a, a filter, for example, a filter is a uh, subset of the, the power set of L. This is called a, a filter. Uh, if it's uh, closed at their intersection, and moreover, if we have uh, an F that implies a DZ. And a natural filter is a uh, uh, filter that is not contained uh, properly uh, in any uh, proper filter. Okay, and the correspondence is very simple. Uh, given the natural filter U, I'll just take the set of um, elements AL such that uh, both L satisfying AL equals to zero belongs to U. So uh, sometimes we just uh, abbreviate this to AL is equivalent modular U to zero. Okay, so this is uh, very standard. Now, some of these uh, maximal ideals are not what we want. Maybe uh, if you just take a projection to one of DL, uh, you get a red due field of positive characteristic, and we don't want that. But we, we can just melt out by the direct sum of all the FL. And uh, that Correspond to non principal ultra filters on L. And uh, for each non principal ultra filter, the red field, field is the field of characters zero. And we have one. We have, uh, we, uh, we got another way of 
uh, getting from torsion to a uh, characteristic zero. Okay, let me write this down. Now, in principle, uh, I'll show filters. Okay, but you know this by script U. Uh, this corresponds to uh, the spectrum of uh, product of FL by the direct sum of FL. So for each uh, for each U here, um, so this uh, this uh, maximum ideal let me denote this by M U. Now we can define this view uh, by taking a so-called ultra product. So we define QU for each uh, non-principal uh, ultra filter, we define QU to be uh, the so-called ultra product of DFL. And this is simply the product of DFL uh, by um, the maximum ideal corresponding to U or the, the equivalence relation corresponding. And this is the field of characteristic zero. And the advantage of using this language of uh, ultra filters is that we can uh, generalize this construction to uh, many other structures. Like uh, if we have a vector space for each L, so if, I have, if we have a family of L in L, we have a family of FL vector spaces. So each VL is a FL vector space. Then uh, we can take the ultra product of all the of all the VL. So this is defined to be the product of all the VL uh, by the uh, equivalence relation corresponding to the And this is going to be a QU vector space. But the, uh, we have to be careful here. So if we start with uh, not just vector space, but finite dimensional vector space, uh, then it's not necessarily true that this uh, this uh, ultra product is uh, is finite dimensional. But of course, if you uh, if all these spaces are uh, have bounded dimension, then the ultra product is finite. So in fact, the uh, boundedness of this dimension is equivalent to uh, the finite dimensionality of all the Ultra product for, for every non principal ultra bridge. So this is a very simple algebraic fact. And now, um, using this, we can define. So now, uh, K is a field and X is separated by a type over K. Uh, we can define this ultra product cohomology just by taking the ultra product of both the FL cohomology. So U is a U is a non-principal ultra filter. Then we define H I uh, X K bar uh, Q U to be the ultra product of the H I X K bar uh, F L. And similarly for the uh, compactly supported cohomology. So this is a, uh, a Q vector space. And one can show, I think this is, this is written in a uh, paper by Paul Google, that um, the dimension so H i uh, x a bar f l is, uh, is bounded. So actually uh, the dimension of this is finite. The ultra product homology is well defined. It's a finite dimensional uh, Q vector space. And uh, in the case of, so it satisfies the usual, uh, the, the properties that we expected them to satisfy. Uh, for example, if, if X is projected smooth, then uh, this really gives us 
gave our uh, preview. This is really a, a ray palm audio theory. And this was, uh, this was mm, uh, remarked by uh, 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 around 2004, I think. And this kind of ultra product was uh, considered even earlier by, uh, by Stair. Um, but uh, basically there's uh, very little literature on them and uh, they haven't been uh, extensively studied. Um, now, uh, the fact that, okay, so now let me explain why this is uh, related to the question of torsion freeness. So this uh, boils down to this uh, very simple, the following uh, very simple observation. So we know that the cohomology, you now X is general again. Um, this uh, dimension, so we look at the cohomology, this coefficient in FL, and we know that the dimension is uh, greater Fix the index i. This is greater than or equal to uh, the dimension of uh, QL cohomology. And moreover, equality holds, so this is just a universal uh, coefficient theorem. The equality holds if um, the chi x k bar zl and the chi plus one x k bar zl are totally free. So from here, we can deduce that, um, so uh, we have this uh, QL cohomology and for this FL cohomology, we can take ultra product and form all the ultra product cohomology and we can compare the dimension. So uh, from here, we see that uh, instead of taking just QL cohomology, we should take, so this is a, notation due to Anna, we should actually take uh, Q dagger cohomology where a dagger uh, runs through the union of L and U. So if all these spaces, this QL cohomology and the QU cohomology, they have all the same dimension. So that is actually equivalent to the L independence of um, the dimension of QL cohomology and the torsion freeness of all the um, uh, of HI and HI plus one for uh, L large enough. So uh, our problem, our question B, the sense can be converted to an extended version of our uh, question A. So instead of just uh, looking at uh, zero cohomology, you can now concentrate on uh, cohomology with coefficients in fuse, but not just QL, but also this, uh, this Q, uh, Q dagger. So now we are looking at uh, the problem of independence of dagger uh, instead of just independence of L. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, in a sense, so uh, the ultra product cohomology is an even larger family of cohomologies because uh, we know that the cardinality of U, <laughs> the cardinality of U is two to the where C is the continuum. So this is really a, a very large family of uh, cohomology series. Unfortunately for this question of independence of dagger, it is not 
uh, very different from uh, the question of influenza. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so uh, now we can ask this extended version of uh, question A. Uh, do we have to, so we can take the, we can consider the characteristic point on the uh, first part of characteristic point on the here of uh, Q dagger, and we ask that this is in Z of D bracket T and in the end of dagger. And uh, every time we prove uh, capital A and, and small b, we actually prove this version A plus. Okay. Uh, now let me move on to uh, decomposition theorem, which is a uh, uh, ingredient in, in our proof. Now there are there are several versions of uh, the, the decomposition theorem. Um, perhaps let me recall the very uh, very simple version. So we just take uh, x to y. They are um, both uh, let's say proper and smooth, and the morphism is also proper and smooth uh, over this field. Over a few, um, and then uh, one of the uh, manifestation of the decomposition theorem is when we consider the the Lorentz spectral sequence. Gpq equals hp uh, y. We uh, give just a name f y k bar of f lower star r q of let's say q l. Um, is a bus to HP plus Q of uh, X to bar to L. And because of the weight theory, you know that this, this degenerates uh, at E2, uh, degenerate on the E2 page. And, and moreover, uh, this decomposition theorem is much uh, uh, stronger. It tells us that actually the Rf lower star of Q are already splits as uh, a direct sum of uh, shifts of, of sheaves. So let me say that result in its uh, full generality. And that's uh, a part of this theorem of uh, decomposition theorem of uh, DDG. Now we are no longer assuming uh, X and Y to be uh, proper smooth, but we do assume that F is proper. And uh, Y and X are just, uh, let's say Y is separated in finite type over uh, K equals FQ. And then uh, we take a sheaf a perverse sheaf on X, it's pure. Then uh, the decomposition theorem tells us that our uh, at lower star of L can be decomposed as uh, this perverse R I at lower star of L. I should put I negative I. So we have this decomposition. Where each piece is pure, uh, so the ice piece is pure of weight. Uh, if this is pure of weight zero, then the ice piece is pure of weight i. Now, for for our theorem, uh, of course, we need a we need a ultra product version of this theorem, and uh, so for that uh, for that goal, we. It's not enough to just define algebraic cohomology with constant coefficient. We actually need algebraic cohomology with, uh, with more involved coefficients. 
So there is a, a small obstacle there. So if we just take, um, let's say that the simple case, we, we have X, and then we take a local system, uh, FL local system. On uh, our X. And we do this right here, open group D. And then we want to define cohomology, ultra product cohomology with coefficient in FL. Um, the problem is then that uh, this space, so we can consider X to the bar FL, then the ultra product here is not necessarily. Uh, finite dimensional. So in general, we do not have this is heavy uh, infinite in general. Because um, so even if we bound uh, the rank, so uh, let's take all the uh, our local system of the same rank on X, uh, but uh, we know uh, too well from uh, ramification theory already, in the case of curves from the rolling box formula, that this dimension is uh, infinite in general. And uh, of course, in higher dimension, we have this um, uh, Takeshi's uh, index formula, uh, which again uh, tells us that this um, ramification uh, comes into play. And in order for this uh, theory to work for coefficients, we have to bound. Uh, not only uh, the constructability, but also the ramification of, uh, of the sheaves. So here's how we do it. So we define uh, this time for, for constructor sheaves, a condition, so now uh, X is general and we have FL, which of them is, uh, is uh, constructible. So I, I take a family of constructible FL sheaves. So by this, I mean, uh, really, I mean uh, uniformly constructible. We can find the same stratification, and on each strata, we have the same bound for the uh, dimensions of the stocks. But we need an extra condition on the ramification uh, that we call uh, quasi tame. So we, we say that um, this uh, family is quasi tame. If um, there exists some x prime to x, which is surjective, and um, maybe let me write the surjective, surjective, and uh, a proper morphism, so, uh, and a convectification here, um, x prime bar, this is proper, over k, so everything is over k. Um, such that if we you know this by pi, this pi upper star uh, FL is tame on uh, x prime bar. So if we you know this by j, this is tame. In the sense that uh, that uh, for every uh, for every geometric point here. Uh, T bar and for every for every T bar and for every point U on the um, strict cancelization um, the uh, gamma action on uh, the uh, corresponding so FL bar is factors through uh, through a, a p prime uh, quotient. So that's a condition in the paper of uh, Algo Gozo. And the big theorem, so in this way we can define uh, uh, the category of the so uniformly bounded, uniformly constructible, and positive tame uh, objects. And the theorem 
of uh, algorithm says that uh, this guy is preserved by uh, the six functors, by the six operations, and you add it. So this is a natural um, uh, generality that we can work with. And uh, we define this, uh, the, so maybe like start with sheaves. So we define a constructible sheaf of uh, QU modules. So this is defined to be uh, this uh, uniformly constructible and because I change sheaves of FL modules. This is really for all the L and L. And not out by this uh, equivalence relation uh, corresponding to U. And then uh, by uh, Rogozov's theorem, uh, we have six functors on the derived category of this guy, uh, the category of constructible uh, QU sheets. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we can write a, a, a meta theorem. Uh, um, so what uh, Anna and then Anna and myself uh, done is uh, we can we can establish every uh, the analogs of uh, weight theory and uh, so reverse sheaves and. Uh, uh, decomposition theorem and uh, hard left chess. Uh, for a Q cohomology for the algebra. Okay, now I have to uh, tell you how to apply this theorem. So how do we get this? Uh, so I'll give you an example of this uh, Q uh, constructive sheaf. <coughs> so recall that, um, so this time let's start with, um, Okay, I use EL. So we start with QL after uh, local systems. So this is our, so we start with a family of, so this EL is a you know, QL local system. Uh, Rx. And we say that, uh, we call that this, uh, this system is called compatible. Um, When we look at the local uh, for various system polynomials, um, so it's a little definition. This is a uh, polynomial with coefficient in Q and the name of uh, that. When we have this uh, QL uh, local system, we can take um, an integral model. Let's assume that we can take this integral model, uh, this tensor QL, where ML is uh, ZL local system. And then we can take the reduction modulo L. And it turns out, so this is an example, under this uh, assumption of uh, compatibility, if you take uh, EL and then we mod out by L, so this tensor is ZL FL. Uh, this is automatically uh, quasi tame. There, there are several ways to, to see this. Uh, yes. 
、you, you mean ML, not EL, in the tensor program. Yes, 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 yes. thank you. Okay. Um, So from here, we can uh, state our uh, theorem in more generality. So it holds not only for constant coefficient, uh, but also for, uh, let me say this is a corollary. Um, so the general situation is as follows. We take, um, but this is not the most general. So we have a proper morphism. And to simplify, to simplify things, I take an immersion J here from some U to X and I assume that U is smooth. And we start with, uh, as before, we start with uh, those EL. This is a compatible uh, family. Of pure uh, systems. And then basically, um, what we want to say is that uh, if we take this model, so we take models, so EL yeah, is uh, ML, yeah, it's isomorphic to ML tensor to L. And then we take the reduction. We take ML tensors here and echo. Um, and then they will, uh, we can apply uh, the previous theorem to this guy. And then we can get something about these MLs. So then we you know by PL, the uh, intermediate extension for uh, the suitable um, perversity. On uh, the category of uh, ZL sheaves. Now we take J lower shriek star of ML just uh, shifted by B. Let's say this is smooth subdimension B. And the conclusion is that uh, first we have, um, so we have, so there's something that I will add here. But basically, what we want is. Uh, the decomposition theorem, namely that R at lower star of uh, PL is isomorphic to this decomposed. This is PRI at lower star PL uh, shifted by uh, negative I. And secondly, uh, we have the hard effect theorem. Um, that if, uh, so for any F uh, ample uh, line, invertible sheet line model, um, uh, now, um, yeah, uh, okay, this is also an L, but, uh, uh, when you cut with uh, uh, C1 uh, I times, you get this um, isomorphism from uh, PRI, PR negative I, RF over star PL, uh, isomorphic with PRI. And uh, we want this to hold for L large enough. So each of this is uh, then will be torsion free. But uh, in fact, there's a, uh, there's a refined version of this where we can take, so we can uh, make precise the meaning of, of L large enough in the sense that uh, we actually can take a, a uniform bound for all the models. So uh, the actual, um, statement here is that there exists an L naught uh, such that 
uh, for every L greater than L naught and uh, for every model, so for every um, ZL uh, local system, uh, ML uh, satisfying this um, isomorphism, uh, admitting this isomorphism, uh, we have the following uh, results. We have the decomposition theorem, we have torsion freeness, and we have the uh, hard object theorem. And if you apply this, of course, to the, to the uh, uh, constant coefficient, uh, plus a little bit of extra work, you get uh, uh, part two of uh, our uh, the, the main theorem, the first theorem. And um, uh, part one of the theorem is basically uh, just an extension so, uh, of uh, Gaber's uh, uh, famous theorem on uh, L independence for intersection homology. But uh, this time was uh, with uh, ultra product homology. Okay, uh, let me stop here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a nice talk. So are there any questions or comments from the audience? Yeah, so let me ask some questions. So you, you, you start from this compatible system and you take uh, lattice and you get you take this uh, root, root product. So, yes. so there are several choices of uh, lattices in, in ML. So that is the, the root product you get uh, depends on the choice of uh, uh, ML. Uh, sorry, uh, what's, what's the question? Yeah, so you start from EL, yes, to go to outer product, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you take uh, ML, yeah, so the yeah, the the, the uh, what what do you, you get depends on the choice of ML. Oh, uh, so that's what uh, what this term, so um, so basically, this is uh, really about the. This is a result about ML, not just the. Uh, not just yeah, the yeah, yeah. So the, for this corollary, it's uh, it's uh, uh, for for okay. L, we fix L, but the, for the, the theorem before. For the theorem before, um, um, <laughs> I have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe the, the question is too big, but uh, yeah. So you you talk about uh, this uh, Q U shift. Yes. Yeah, the, the, so so you, even if you start from the same uh, EL, uh, the 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 shift you or uh, QU shift you get may depends on ML. Yeah, I understand the question, but uh, I don't have a. Uh. Uh, so the question is. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So that's yeah, the, yeah. And on on EL, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have an answer right now. <laughs> ah, right. I see, I see. Okay, and then, then the next question. So in the beginning, you, you, so you, you formulated this independence of L of dimension in terms of the existence, existence of V, uh, uh, Q, Q vector space or Z yes. module. Yeah. Yeah. So with Frobenius, you, you can uh, formulate a similar uh, way. Uh, you mean a compatible with Frobenius action? Yeah, yeah. So you you have this condition yeah. A. Yeah, we can we can do that. Yeah, but uh, uh -huh. but, but uh, basically, you... then then it involves yeah. this conjecture on the uh, semi uh, semi sim semi simplicity and. Uh, yeah, so, so, becomes, and, so, and so I think, uh, yeah, and uh, for for proposal's case, uh, you, uh, we we can ask the same simplicity, but uh, for uh, open open single variety, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, I uh, don't, don't know if we, yeah, okay, and then the, the last question is that uh, so so you to 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 take. To consider auto product, uh, you take you start from the product of FL, but um, you could start from the the finite Adele. 
it, it, it's the same thing or it, this is just a naive uh, question? Uh, no, no, it's a very good question. So uh, yeah, I should, I should mention uh -huh. that before our work there was already um, this work by Gadoha uh, and uh, uh -huh. Hui and, and, and uh, actually Tamagawa and the, uh, mm -hmm. on this kind of uh, ultra product of, of, uh, of ZL. The mm -hmm. is uh -huh. So there are uh, some other prime idea uh, of finite idea? Yeah, so, so there's really a, a, so you just take this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just take this ring and there are various, various ideas to consider in. Uh, huh. So you can also consider the, the ultra product of QL instead of just. Uh, yeah. Just FL, and there are so there, ah. are, there are very complicated relations between all those conjectures for for QL, for QU, or for the ultra product of QL, and that's uh, that's, that's ah. done in, in their paper. Uh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, thank you very much for the nice lecture. So that's all for for me. Okay, so there's another question from Lars Hesseholt, so I will unmute you. So yeah, I think I muted unmuted you, okay. so you can ask directly. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, uh, we so, can hear you. <laughs> so, uh, so on this, uh, on speak of the product of the FLs, uh, so this is there's this interesting topology, it's an extremely disconnected space. Uh, so uh, in the spirit of uh, condensed mathematics, perhaps it's possible to use this topology and uh, consider all also products at the same time, so to speak. Is this something you have thought about? Yeah, this is a very, very good question. So we have uh, tried, so if we take all the, um, all the ultra, uh, all the ultra filters, um, that's, uh, of course, that's the uh, uh, stone check and magnification of the set of uh, yeah. discrete set of uh, prime numbers. Um, and uh, there, there are ways, like, we can, we can define this um, ultra product homology uh, using, let's say, the, the pro tau topology, etc. cetera. But um, so far, we have not been able to obtain uh, substantial results using that uh, that kind of approach. Okay, good. But this is definitely something that we would like to look into. Yeah. yeah thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. So, any other questions or comments? So, yeah, you can ask on chat or use a reaction to raise your hands. Then we can unmute you. So, yeah, if everyone is okay, then yeah, thank you very much for your very nice talk. And so we thank the speaker again. And the next talk starts at 10.15 as scheduled, and Yuri Yatagawa will give a talk. So, yeah, see you then. <laughs>